gingerly look with your photographs. I said that Rich likes to create a painterly look with his photographs, You're doing a lot of landscapes. Um, I like what you said here. A great landscape painting expresses the artist's impression of a place in a way that is more important than what this the scene actually looks like. It's my impression of what I'm looking at that I wish to share with you in my photography, which I like that statement a lot. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> So welcome, and um, as we, we're talking, Rich now has agreed to do our next year's best of year and another workshop next year on um, what we say again. I forgot my mind is finding gone. finding your creative voice. Finding your creative right, and um, I'm reading a book by Guy. Oh, now I forgot his last name. He's Guy a Paul. he's wrote the book um, never uh, never a moment wasted. And yeah, yeah. A day not yeah. wasted. I'd love a that. A day book. not wasted. Yeah. And he talks a lot about creativity and, and, and this statement falls in line with how he does his photography too, that I read from your, your site. It's a very interesting book. So uh, anyway, welcome. And that's why I chose that topic, finding your creativity. You know, I think that's more important than wondering what the judge is like in a, in a contest because it's <laughs> Because everybody's idea of creativity is different, and we have to explore our own our own inner selves rather than what is expected of us. So, welcome. Thank you. And I hope you like my photographs. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. <laughs> okay. uh, I guess with that, I'm not. Uh, I'm sorry, Sandy. Is I'm that, done. You done? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, I guess we'll start. I don't see anybody else coming in right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Richard, we've got um, uh, we've got only six photos in our intermediate class open. I'm sorry, eight in our open and six in our theme. And in the uh, advanced class, we've got uh, 23 in open and 27 in theme. Now, let me see if I can get this how do i do this let's see Hold on. show screen okay share screen multiple participants can share. i think that's what you're doing multiple participants right i think so you guys see anything not yet no nope. and i've got pcp running here but why don't i see it Oh yeah. Did you prep? Did you do the share screen? Right. Okay. Do you see something now? No. No. Still see you. Hold on. Got it. Yeah. Stonebridge. Yeah. Got started. it. There yes. you go. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Holy moly! It's been a long time. <laughs> All right. Um. Okay. So we'll start with open. Uh, group one. Um, and let's see, score contest, and we will start. Open group one, this is our uh, intermediate uh, group, and this is open. Golden. Okay, um, very nice, very nice image. I mean, I, I love this subject, which is this pagoda. It's absolutely, uh, you know, I mean, it's a beautiful piece of architecture and you photographed it really well. I mean, I, it's something like this, uh, you know, normally a judge might say, oh, it's way too centered. But in reality, I think, you know, centering something like this really, really uh, helps the composition as opposed to hurts it. I mean, it's not quite completely centered. Um, the only, I mean, the critique I, I can give you with this, I kind of wish you were at a little bit lower camera angle and maybe slightly different position. Um, whereas I think it's a great idea to frame your photograph with uh, the, um, you know, the, um, those pine branches above, they actually are, you know, dipping into the front of, you know, into the top of the building, which really is uh, some of the nicest part of that architecture uh, with those arched windows and so on. So I kind of wish you were at a little bit lower camera angle and also moved a little bit closer so the 
uh, bushes in the front, particularly that one thing with the green leaves on it wasn't kind of in there. That None of those things kind of help the composition to, in order to frame it. Uh, another um, thing would be, it looks like you have a nice sky with clouds and so on, but it's kind of washed out. So in post-processing, you could, uh, particularly uh, with some of the new features in Lightroom, if you use that, you can isolate the sky and actually uh, process that separately from the rest of your subject. Uh, I'll give this a six. Golden sunset. Um, nice thing. I, I I think this is really just a, a beautifully strong sunset. Um, I like it. I you know sometimes you know you look at a scene and it's just the sunset and the water and you don't really um, you know it it it's almost like um, it's like a it's, I I'm trying to say it in a way that doesn't make it sound like it's a cliche, but it just sort of like it's just sort of there, but this, I think your band of red in the sky there is really nice. It's really, uh, it's really very pretty. And um, I think that's really uh, a strong element of this. A couple of suggestions on this would be uh, in your cropping, uh, whereas you don't have your horizon line perfectly centered. I do think there's some of the ocean there. If you cropped up from the bottom, maybe half of the ocean out, I think it would be stronger because it would really draw your attention to the sky. And also crop in just a little bit from the left. You have something that looks like a hotel or an apartment building. There's just a little piece of it showing. And I kind of wish that wasn't there. Uh, and all that stuff would really, really just force the eye to concentrate on that absolutely amazing sky. Um, that being said, I will give this one a seven because it's got a very, very strong visual impact in this image. A cheaper way to travel. <laughs> I don't know about that. I, just, I think some of those camels can be kind of expensive. <laughs> um, really nice image. I like the backlighting on this and the long shadows in front of the um, the camels and the people riding them and so on. Um, it's also kind of an interesting thing because, you know, you, you see sometimes some of these travel images, you see people who are actually using camels for real transportation as opposed to this sort of touristy shot. And I don't mean that in a negative way by any stretch of the imagination, because I think this photograph's really interesting. It's got a very different message to it. Uh, I mean, it's just, as opposed to, you know, like uh, you know, whether, I, if this is Egypt, uh, Egyptians, or if it's an Arab country with, uh, with Arabs, you know, kind of using these camels for their work or their transportation, what you've got is a bunch of, uh, looks like some American tourists you know, wearing shorts, one guy's on his phone, you know, it's just like, it, to me, it's a, it, it's a fascinating image in that way. Uh, and it really makes up for, you know, I mean, I could like critique it for the things like the tire tracks in the background, make it look very unnatural and all the other stuff. But for what really the message I'm getting from this image, I think, you know, none of that stuff really matters because it's really got a really interesting story to it. My uh, one critique would be to kind of lighten up your shadows a bit on this one, mainly because, I mean, uh, I'd love to see a little bit more detail in the camels, uh, particularly their faces. A lot of them, the, you know, you can't quite see the eye of the animal or anything like that. It'd be nice to see that. And that's just adjusting your shadow slider would do that. It would also bring out some of the details like the, uh, you know, the, the woman, her, uh, you know, she's all wrapped up in a, uh, you know, uh, in, in, you know, like, I, I'm not exactly sure what what she's doing there, but it would be kind of neat to see a little bit more detail in what's going on up there, as well as everybody else who's kind of dressed in a darker clothing. But still, it's a really interesting image. Uh, give it a seven. Mother, daughter. Um, that, uh, interesting image on this, you know, another, um, you know, uh, kind of fascinating travel image, you know, not your standard uh, travel shot, I, I would say, um, you know, it's, it's, it's very interesting in that you have this like very, very attractive young woman in, in the background there, who's I'm assuming is the daughter and then the mother up front who, you know, obviously, uh, looks like is in need of some dental work and so on. Um, but again, just, it's, it's got that kind of message to it. That's really interesting. Um, you know, kind of almost a, a, a journalistic image. Um, the one thing that I have to say is compositionally, I 
I'm, I'm, I'm having some issues with this mainly because you've got, um, you know, the, the your, your two subjects are very centered, but everything going on around them, um, you know, particularly the one individual that's to the left, I'm not exactly what sure it's going on there. The guy's wearing guy or woman that's wearing gray. And then the, uh, you know, the background, I think that's kind of almost a distraction and it really kind of takes away from the actual image itself. Um, you know, also, I think for the mom, I would really like to see a little bit more detail in that face. She's a little bit too much shadow on my screen. I'd really like to see, you know, more of her eyes. I mean, she's, you know, she seems like she's very happy. And I think if you really show the eyes more of that, like bring, again, bring up that shadow slider to show a little bit more of what's going on in her face. I think it would really, really engage uh, your viewer with your subject. And the only way, I mean, with the other person, I don't know if you have any other images of these two without that person standing there or anything like that. But if you got something like that, I would uh, recommend that you explore that as well. Um, this one, I, I'm going to give a six to this one. The server. Um, really interesting image. Um, hang on a second here. I just want to see something. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so this is, a, I mean, a, a great action shot on this one. I mean, particularly the position of the, uh, uh, of this young guy. Uh, it's just, I mean, it's, the position is not like what you would expect for uh, tennis. Yeah, it's just kind of really just an odd position for this kid to be in. And um, uh, it's neat that he's completely off the ground. You can kind of see with his sneaker is not touching the ground at all. I mean, it's just really just an interesting image. I love the shadow. Uh, I love the other person that's just sort of standing back there staring. It kind of gives a really interesting uh, story to this. I mean, I think you could have cropped this a little bit in from the left a, a little bit more that uh, the INE, uh, which is probably some advertisement or something like that, would be nice if it wasn't there just because um, it's just kind of in the way, or if you could have cloned it out or something like that. And then the other thing is just, it would be nice that the, the, if you look at the shoes, this white sneakers, they're really hot and you can't see any detail in them. But still, I mean, that being said, this still is a very interesting image and you've caught this kid in a really odd position. Uh, I will give this one a seven. That's for leather dying. Uh very interesting. Um, you know, you kind of lose the perspective of this image until you see the people. Um, you don't really see them at first. And, um, you know, it's got a really neat composition. You've got this leading line that kind of leads you into uh, the city. So the idea that, you know, this is like taking place right in the middle of a place where people live and so on. And, you know, Lord knows what this smells like or anything. But then you see, you know, then it's like because that's such a strong uh element you don't really notice the people right away and then when you do i mean there's people on the right people on the left you see how small they are and how big these vats are it really uh you know it really set, lends a message here uh you know one critique of this image would be i mean obviously you were here when you were here and you made the best of the image um you know it's uh being a time of day issue you've got some really kind of harsh shadows going on uh but that being said you handled them really well i mean if you look there's detail and all the shadows and they kind of go dark where you really don't need to see any detail in the image. And also I like the fact that you've got a minimal amount of sky in here. You know, maybe I would have liked a tad more, but because you've got a straight up blue sky, you've really minimized that. And as a result, you, you have a very interesting image that tells a really great story uh, as far as what it's like to, uh, you know, live and work in this particular uh, city that you're photographing. Um, I, this is definitely a seven. Take down. Um, interesting. Yeah, it's an interesting scene. Um, you know, in one sense, it's like, uh, you know, okay, yeah, it's just an image of people chopping down a tree, but, you know, really it's the nature of the tree that's coming down. You know, it's this big, beautiful old tree, and obviously the branches are gone, but you wonder, you know, A, why is it going down? Is it sick? Is it, you know, is it just the homeowner decided they just didn't want it anymore? Um, you know, whatever it is, but, you know, really kind of shows, you know, that it's kind of a, 
kind of a storied image in that way of this uh, tree. Um, uh, just a couple of things from a compositional standpoint, though. Um, on the right-hand side, you see some, you know, a bit of another tree. You just sort of see the little bushy parts going on there. And then you see the, uh, yeah, I think those are, those are the kind of things from a compositional standpoint. I mean, if you were taking this picture for a newspaper or a publication, that kind of stuff doesn't matter. But, you know, when you look at the fact that this is a camera club competition, you've really got to, like, look at the artistic value of the image as well as the journalistic value of the image. And, you know, with that, I'd say, you know, that's kind of like a, something I would want to uh, not, you know, I, I wish you would have cropped that out as well as whatever that um, uh, vehicle or piece of machinery that it is on the left that's yellow. Um, you know, that type of thing, you either show all of it or you don't show any of it. Um, and I think it would be much stronger image. Same thing with the cones and so on. You kind of kind of like when you're telling a story, you got to like look at like what elements help tell the story and what elements detract from the story. And there's one other thing I wanted to look at. Yeah. And also uh, I'm noticing some other stuff, uh, which is in the sky. It looks like there's some, you know, on the left hand side, it's just stuff falling off the tree, which actually adds to the image. But I also see it looks what looks like sensor spots and some other things going on in the sky that look like, you know, these are things that should have been fixed uh, in order to present this image uh, in, a, in a camera club competition. Um, I, 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 I have to give this one a six. Metal artist. Um, really neat. I mean, well, first off, this guy's really good. Um, just beautiful uh, imagery here that, uh, you know, the, of the stuff that this guy makes. I hope you bought something because it really is, uh, you know, some of those bird things. I'll tell you, I would buy those in a minute. They're so gorgeous. Uh, but just really kind of neat showing this artisan here and what he's doing. Um, you know, I'm not sure what it is he's working on, but you see some of his tools. And everything here is composed really nicely. Um, I love the kind of juxtaposition between the horse's head and the artisan's head, you know, and you see, you know, just like all these little details that just sort of come to you, like, you know, he's wearing a wedding ring, um, you know, just, it's just like this really kind of a neat thing, you know, and the fact that he's smiling and so on. It just, I just think this is really just a very well done kind of travel image. And it's, and it says a lot. I mean, yeah, yeah, there's a couple of little things here that might be a bit of a distraction, you know, like there's like a, in the lower right hand corner, there's a piece of some other, artwork uh you know there's this little fluffy red and white thing on the left hand side in the middle but you know these things are they, they're yeah they're a little distracting but the image the center of the image is so strong particularly the juxtaposition of the horse's head the artisan and then all the stuff around it that these things really really don't distract you enough to disturb your viewing of the image so you know here's just like a, again a really great journalistic shot that has a really strong artistic value to it. So I'll give this one a seven. Okay, that's it. Um, I'm not sure if when I do this, I uh, I don't see any of the Zoom screen and I just wanna, I don't know if anybody was trying to get in at that time. Well, let me let me proceed. All right, so we've got five sevens, Richard. So in this right. pass, uh, seven, eight, or nine. Okay. Golden sunset. Okay, this. Uh, 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 I'm going to give this one a seven. A cheaper way to travel. <laughs> uh, this this one I'll give an eight. The server. Uh, I also give this one an eight. Vats for leather dyeing. Uh, I will give this one a nine. And metal artist. Uh, this one's definitely a nine. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. All right, so we've got two nines, 
from those, uh, I'm going to ask you to pick, uh, well, first and second. Okay. And if I remember correctly, it's a V. Well, you can look at both. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So th this one will be, uh, the vast for dying will be second place and the yeah. artisan uh, will be first place. Okay. So okay. this one a nine and this one a seven. Yeah. You okay, Lucy? Come on. Okay. Okay, so now we assign the award. That one is first place. This one is second place. And then you want me to pick a third from the eight? No. Uh, when we have below 10, we just do a first and second. And really, that's only if we have eights and no, nines. Okay. All right, uh, review contest. Okay, uh, open group one, second place, uh, Diane Kuzlansky, Vats for Leather Dying. Nice going, nice job. And first place goes to Diane Kuzlansky also. Very nice photo. Diane, I don't know. Uh, she's, she's not on, right? Mm -hmm. um, let me, before I go to open group two, uh, what do I have to do? Stop sharing for a second to see if anybody's might... trying to get in? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, you're going to have to either stop sharing or assign somebody to be co-host, and they can watch for uh, people waiting to get in. Well, let me let me stop. I hate to. All right, hold on. Let me stop sharing. Why don't you share? Put me in as. Uh, what can you I, put me in as co-host? I, I don't know how to do it. No, there's nobody else there. Oh, okay. I don't see anyone. Okay. All right. So go back to share screen. There. <laughs> Share and we are okay. We've got uh 23 in this is open for the advanced. Got it. All right, and this is our our first pass. Open group two. Kiss me. <laughs> no thanks. Um <laughs> really uh yeah, kind of a cool shot for sure. Um, you know, I mean, I, uh, I, 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 I like the fact, you know, I mean, it was something like this. It's like with the, you know, with a shot that really has a lot of humor to it. Um, you really got to take a, you know, uh, a, a sort of a, a look at it in a, you know, not, you know, not, not, not lean so hard on the composition, uh, as you would, because it, it really, yeah, it's a pretty impactful image. And um, yeah, the fact that the fish is just centered like that and the top fin is cut off, it's almost like, you know, you look at the face and you really just got to, you know, you really just sort of got to love the scene and what's going on here. And I'm, oh, I, when I see these things, I vacillate back and forth between, you know, is this just a snapshot or is this an act, you know, is this an artistic image? But the impact of just being that face, you know, particularly that mouth. It's just so strong that uh, I, I'm, I'm going to give this one a seven. Uh, Dahlia Valley. I think I pronounced it right. Yeah, nice, uh, really interesting um, uh, floral shot. I mean, definitely not your typical flower shot. Uh, it's almost like not a flower shot. It's almost more like a... Uh, an abstract, you know, like a floral abstract in a way. And I really like it. I mean, I love the colors of it. 
Uh, the image appears to be nice and sharp. Uh, when I look at it at the, you know, at, at, at like the full size, it looks a little blurry, but I always like reduce them down in size just to make sure. And it looks, uh, when I do that, um, it looks sharp as a tack. So um, it's just really neat. I, I like that. Um, yeah, my only suggestion on this, and I don't even know, I mean, I would try it and then I might actually go back to the way you've got it, would be to maybe crop a little bit off the top. I don't know if that's a good suggestion or not, that without actually doing it and seeing it, it's hard to say. But I, I just think, you know, it's a, it's an unusual way to present a flower, particularly one like this one. So, uh, you know, kudos for that. Uh, but I, And you've done very successfully. So this is definitely a seven. Sunflower abstract. Um, yeah, so here's another one that is, you know, again, a very interesting presentation of a sunflower, it's one that you really don't see that often like this. I mean, you know, normally it's like, oh, sunflower, so you show the whole thing. But here you're basically just showing the, you know, the formation of the sunflower seeds, which is kind of cool. Uh, the only thing with this, I mean, I, your composition is, is absolutely gorgeous uh, with the way you, pos you know, position the center of the image or center of the, you know, focal point of the flower and so on. Uh, the only thing that I find, uh, you know, uh, what, what I think would be, you know, where this image kind of falls short is in a couple of areas. And one is the, um, there, so, uh, it was something like this because the composition is so strong. I would love to see everything just sharp as a tack in this so that you can really, really see what's going on in this image. Um, the other thing is there's a couple of things that look like, I don't know if they're part of the flower or they're just some hairs or something that got stuck in the flower. You know, there's one on the left and there's one on the right, just close to center. Uh, when I was, you know, if I was uh, composing this image, I would probably uh, remove those things, you know, either remove them in post or just pick them out of the flower uh, while you're composing the image. But this, I think, would be just a really amazing image if it was just everything was tack sharp in it. Because if you notice, there's little water drops and everything, dew drops on the on the flower, and that just really kind of all that stuff needs to be super sharp. Uh, give us the six. Peaceful moment by a river. Um, yeah, it's a neat little peaceful scene, um, you know, something like that. I mean, if, you know, you imagine the scene if the woman wasn't in it and it really would just be sort of, yeah, a nice reflection, nice rock, but it really wouldn't, uh, the, the image wouldn't have much strength to it. But yet here we've got, you know, you add the human element to this, you know, sort of like human, you know, person in, in her environment. And now you've got a very, very different scene. And, uh, you know, you can see, even though it's, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's a bright, looks like spring type colored day and must be warm because of the way she's dressed. You know, I mean, she's not, she's not wearing a coat or anything like that. She's got shorts on and a, and a light shirt. So that's kind of neat. She's just sort of sitting there and, uh, you know, looking at her phone, which is what we all do. You know, it kind of sort of dates it as a modern image uh, and so on. And, you know, it's just something like this. It, um, it's it's a it's a really neat image. Um, I mean, I think it's it looks a little crooked to me. Yeah, you know, I kind of wish if you kind of rotated it a little bit to the left, even if it's not crooked. I think rotating it a little bit to the left would kind of even out make your creek a little bit straighter. The little ripple lines in the in, or in the in the lake or with pond or whatever this is would make it a little bit stronger. Uh, I mean, and, and and so on. But it's still kind of neat, and I think though the the message of this would really be. Um, I, I would really like this a little strong if she was actually looking into the environment instead of looking at her phone. I mean, there's a little bit more of a journalistic statement there, but still, it's you know, it's a very, very interesting image. Uh, other thing too, I would that little blue thing, little blue reflection of the sky on the right, all the way in the right in the center, that I would have uh, probably wanted to get rid of to either clone it out or, or crop it out in some way. But still, nice image. I'll give it a seven. barn in black and white um really um i i like this a lot um you know i like the um i love the compositional element here with the leading line kind of of the of the building with the windows walk, working into this um into the silos you know where i live there's a lot of farms uh 
like this, uh, you know, either, either either horse farms or there's a few cattle farms as well, um, where these would be the, you know, these this would be where either the milking or whatever is done, you know, uh, is there. What's really interesting is how like the the juxtaposition of somewhat modern siding on the building looks like metal siding. You know, like this might have been a metal building that was added, but then the two old si or three old silos uh, in the background uh, really kind of, uh, you know, it makes an, an interesting juxtaposition and a kind of a, you know, story of farming of how, you know, there's, you look at a lot of farms, you see a mix of modern and old buildings and so on. And this kind of works. Uh, and, you know, the composition is great. Your sky is really great. Um, I probably would have darkened that bright spot in the middle of the top of the sky right on the edge just to kind of help contain you a little bit more, maybe even darken the sky a little bit more to kind of give a bit more of an ominous effect. But still, I mean, it's a beautiful image, nice, nicely composed uh, kind of story of the farm. Uh, let's give this one a seven. Lampshade. Um, really interesting image. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I, it always amazes me when people see this stuff. I, I would walk right by this and never even think of photographing it. But uh, so I really am impressed with the fact that you saw something here with this shadow. And it's just such an amazing shadow. I mean, other than that, I mean, even if there wasn't a shadow here, it's a nice composition, but the shadow really just adds a lot of strength to the image. And, you know, if you really look at it, it comes off like a monochrome image. But when you really look at it, you really see the kind of more of a, a duotone in you know the fact that you've got sort of the bronze color on the top of that uh, that sconce, but yet everything else is kind of more black and white. So that kind of subdued color thing is really interesting. Um, I will never penalize anybody for their choice of framing on this. I think this image has such a strong artistic value. I really would recommend just not having that framing at all. I don't think you need it at all. I think without it, uh, it makes the image a little bit more austere and a little bit more drawing attention to the artistic value of the composition. But again, I, you know, that's your choice and that to me, it's not the frame, it's the photograph and the photograph itself is really just wonderful. Uh, give it a seven. Leaving home. Um, nice. Uh, you know, a nice scene, uh, interesting choice to do this in black and white. Um, when you do that, uh, mainly because of the architecture being older architecture, uh, really uh, doesn't, you know, it kind of gives it a timeless feel. You know, when you really look at, you know, the little things that sort of giveaways like the, um, you know, the person on the left has somewhat of a modern jacket on and then you see the bag and so on, kind of sort of tips off that this is 21st century, but um, still, it's really nice, um, you know, nicely done. Um, if the, uh, you know, the, the angles of the buildings are kind of straight, they're a little off, but not enough to be, uh, you know, looking like there's something wrong with the image. Um, the composition, how you walk, you know, you're led down the street, uh, you know, with the two people in it and the, and the beautiful architectural details entering in the, um, in the sky with the cross, I mean, the, the, the steeple with the cross, and then the, that really dramatic sky. Uh, now, to me, with the sky, I think when I really look at the top of the sky with the clouds, it looks like there's a little bit too much processing going on up there. And I, it, it almost, everything in this image looks so real and so timeless. And then when I look at the sky, it just doesn't look realistic. And I think I would, I would take this back and rework the sky a little bit to kind of make it look a little bit more naturalistic. I don't think you need all, this image is so strong. I don't think you need as much sky drama as you put in this image. Um, but still that being said, I mean, it is really, really strong photograph. I mean, this is seven. Seven? Yep. We love bananas. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, take your word for that. Um, yeah, the the title. I I I'm assuming these butterflies are eating bananas, uh, but your title. I mean, your your processing doesn't really show that. 
Now, that being said, I don't really care, you know, about the title. I, I look at this, okay, so you've created, you've taken this sort of, uh, you know, this sort of image of these three butterflies and turned them into an abstract by making it basically somewhat of a, I guess, maybe almost a tritone. There's like yellows, blues, and browns in this thing. But um, it's interesting in doing that. And what it does is draws your attention away from the fact that these things are on a paper plate. And uh, you know, so it's an interesting way to kind of draw your attention away from that. Uh, mm -hmm. The fact that even though these are beautiful butterflies, they, you know, I've been in these butterfly gardens where you see these gorgeous butterflies and they're eating things and you know, just a place that doesn't really look really natural. So here's a good way to kind of work around about that. Uh, the only thing with this, I do wish um, that you process this in a way that the butterflies would have stood out a little bit more. They kind of blend into the background. And if that's the intent, then that's fine. But when that happens, what I don't see, and particularly with an abstract, you know, abstracts are all about composition and all about uh, directing your eye, you know, visual flow through the image. And, uh, you know, and directing you to whatever the subject is, whether it's shapes or whatever. And with this, I think the butterflies kind of blend in a little bit too much into the background on this. Um, I'll give this one a six. Dahlia Garden. Um, really interesting. Uh, I know we had a, another Dahlia. This is really an uh, interesting choice of the way you process this. Um, you know, the 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 flower looks really, you know, it looks, I'll tell you, it looks almost like a photograph. Okay. It looks like to me like it's a cross between an illustration and a photograph. So kudos to you on the way you process that. <clears throat> and then your background looks like, you know, it looks like a sketch. It looks like almost a uh, possibly a, uh, you know, you did it with oil paint. I mean, I know you did it all digitally, but did it with oil paint or, uh, you know, whether it was done with, you know, pastel or something like that. But your color scheme, you know, the colors all work really well. I mean, if you look, You've got three main colors going on with actually four. You've got the blues, you've got the purples, the yellows and the greens of the flower. And, uh, you know, that's just really strong. And all that stuff kind of echoed in the background. So, you know, whoever it was that created this background, whether you photographed one and added this flower to it or whatever, I don't really care how you did it. Um, you know, I just care what the result is. And I see just something that looks really well thought out really beautifully composed and absolutely amazingly balanced you know just a really really stunning uh portrayal of this particular flower in a very unique way uh definitely a seven somewhere under the rainbow gators lie in wait okay so i'm assuming this isn't some strange breed of alligator that comes in multicolors. i'm kind of assuming that you did something here to make these things this. Um, I'm almost thinking there's multiple, um, you know, there's multiple gate. I mean, there's one gator that you repeated and then you put it on the water background. Um, in fact, I, I'm now actually seeing quite a, a lot of evidence of that. Um, I will tell you the concept of this is really interesting. Uh, however, your technical execution is a bit lacking. I mean, if you look, you can kind of see uh, some type of artifacting going on where in some places where you pasted the, um, you know, you pasted the, uh, the alligator, you can kind of see lines where the pacing is. You also see the, you know, if you look at between the uh, kind of uh, turquoise colored alligator and the bluish purple one, alligator two and three, you see these white lines, which are some kind of artifact lines from the way the image was blended together or something like that. You know, these are the kind of things, if you're working digitally, um, all the stuff that you have to do in a regular image, you still have to do in kind of a digital creation like this. Um, you know, and even just the, uh, the white alligator, uh, it doesn't look like it's been put into the image in such a way. It's too much of a, uh, uh, oh, you know, it's, it's too much of a distinct line between the alligator and the water. Whereas the other ones you see a reflection, you don't see a reflection in that one. So, you know, these are the kind of thing when I look at it, I mean, I think like, you know, what an interesting concept, but it's got technical flaws. And these are the kind of things, I mean, they're all fixable. So 
I would take this image, go back and rework it a bit more. And I think you've got something really fascinating here. Uh, but at this point, the way it's presented, I'm going to have to give it a six. Huddled in the cold. Uh, really kind of a neat scene. I mean, you look at the birds and, um, you know, it's just a really, really interesting image. Uh, you know, one thing when you photograph birds, little birds like this, you know, they're always on these branches and these trees and so on and over bushes. And, and it's like, oh, God, how do I get them right? And, you know, here it, it works really well. Um, the coloring works really well in the image. Um, you know, the positioning, the composition, uh, almost like a, you can almost see the relationship between these two little birds. But even the branches just add to the composition. That one branch that's a strong diagonal. You've got, um, you know, the other ones, the other branches, which make like kind of a neat little diagonal kind of thing that's in the whole thing sort of frames the birds. Um, you know, I kind of, I mean, I kind of see a catch light in their eyes. I kind of wish that's particularly the bird behind. I kind of wish there's a little bit more of a catch light in that bird's eye. Just, you know, one thing, you know, they say, oh, well, it shows the soul of the animal and makes the animal look more alive. But to me, it also gives dimension to the eye. I mean, when you have a black eye like this, um, it's hard to kind of feel the shape of the eye being round. And when you don't see the catch light, it really just looks like this sort of flat black spot. But still, really beautiful image, uh, nicely done. Uh, I, it's a bit soft, but I think you made it work to your advantage that way. Um, and I, uh, I'm going to give this one a seven. Eye of the horse. Um, interesting image. Uh, I mean, I, you know, these horse eye image, I mean, it's like, I've seen them before and they're really nice. And this one's nice. I mean, I, I, I like, the you know the, you know, the eyelashes are really neat. There's a really neat kind of like this green reflection from the background that's kind of drawing you to the shape of the horse's eye. Um, I just sort of wish. I mean, there's a lot of other stuff here. I kind of wish that wasn't there. I mean, the bridle um, of the horse. I kind of I, I kind of wish you were like really got really close and it was just about the eye. And I, whereas I like the green background, particularly with the coloring of the horse, uh, you know, being that kind of beautiful brown, that brownish tone of the, of the horse's hair and, you know, and everything it's a, uh, it's, I think there's just a little bit too much of it. And I kind of wish there was less of it, but I really, really wish I could focus in on the eye. I mean, when I look at this and I think of visual flow, my eye goes to the, you know, my, my eye wants to go to the horse's eye and spend the entire time there, but it keeps being drawn to that bridle, which isn't that interesting. You know, it really isn't. Um, I mean, if there was maybe more of it or none of it, I think it would really work. But, you know, my, if you have more pictures of this horse where the eye is way, you know, where you're really, really focusing on the eye, I think that would be your stronger image. Uh, I'll give this a six. Paper hanger. <laughs> Yeah, well, I that interesting image there with an abstract type thing. And uh, it's really, you know, there's, there's a lady in my club who spent the pandemic folding paper into all different kinds of shapes and shining lights on and coming up with these really cool abstracts. You know, you, you, you just kind of did a real simple thing here. And it really, to me, it's just as strong as what she was doing. Yeah, something that took her hours to do. I don't know how long it took you to do this one. But um, I think this is really kind of a neat image. And I like the fact that all the paper is not the same color. I mean, if you look, you got some sort of a warm color paper and cool color paper. And then the hanger is just really cool. I even like the fact that the hanger is, you know, you could have spent hours making the hanger perfectly straight, but you didn't. And I think that actually also adds to the composition as well. I think it's an interestingly balanced image for sure. Definitely a seven. Sunflower and friend. Sunflower and friend, yeah. Well, um, nice butterfly in the sunflower. I like that very much. Um, yeah, you're, you're, it looks like you're dealing with somewhat a uh, harsh lighting situation here, but you seem to have handled it really well. And then um, I don't know if you added that sky or whether the sky was there again. I don't really, th those kind of things don't matter to me. I If you did add the sky, you did a great job. Um, if you didn't add the sky, then it's interesting that you caught like sunlight, direct sunlight on the, on the flower, but yet 
you got that kind of stormy effect going on in the background, uh, which is, you know, I love when that kind of stuff happens. Uh, but yeah, just really a nice image mm -hmm. on this. I think I, I here's another one where I wish you were a little bit closer and made it more about the flower and the butterfly. The leaves don't really do much for me on this. They're almost like, you know, it's again, my eye wants to go right into the butterfly and sunflower relationship. Uh, but then I kind of go down into the leaves and I kind of get lost there. But still, it's a, it's a really, really nice image and nicely handled, nicely exposed. And, you know, well seen too as well. So I will give this a seven. Polly want a cracker. Um, <laughs> kind of a typical title, but, you know, what do you, how else are you going to title an image like this? Although I, this is a macaw, right? So uh, I don't know if that's a poly, that race of Polly or not. Um, nice image of this, of this bird. Um, you know, obviously some kind of a zoo shot or captive bird. Uh, but still, you know, nicely, uh, you know, nicely handled photograph. I mean, these are such really beautifully colored photographs. I mean, colored birds. Um, you know, I, I really like that. I, I here's another one again with some cropping might really, really help on this. Um, you know, I really want to kind of focus in on the bird, but there's a lot of distracting stuff going on in the background with all that pile of sticks and then um, whatever that stuff is in the background that's hanging up. Um, I would, you know, I would crop out the top of the image. Uh, you could either leave that kind of curvy branch, which is kind of a cool little frame for the bird's head. Uh, but I might even go even a little further down, but that's the kind of thing to play with, uh, with that. And then maybe come a little bit more in on from the uh, left of the image. Uh, you know, just really kind of focus in on the bird more. The other thing too, is you kind of clipped its wing a little bit on the right. It doesn't bother me that the tail's not completely there. I know some bird photographers would, have a conniption on that, but it doesn't really bother me as much, but it does. I do really wish there was more of the bird's wing. Um, but still, you know, nicely exposed bird. Uh, I will, I'll, I'll, I'll give this one a seven. Dahlia splatter. Um, okay, somebody's really having fun with dahlias, that's for sure. Um, this is a very, you know, it's like whatever you're doing with these dahlias, you don't really like doing it the way you're supposed to. And I love that. Um, yeah, it's really kind of a neat, uh, almost looks like a drawing. Um, I'm assuming it's a photograph. Uh, it's a, another one of these ones that's almost black and white. But then when you look, you start to see some kind of sepia effect going on. And I also like that the, the flower in your original photograph was wet. You can see the water drops. And you manage to work that into the scene. And it really just makes this like a really, really interesting, almost like a, a monochrome watercolor. I don't know if there is such a thing as that. Um, but uh, really nicely done. Seven. Wide smile with eyes wide shut. Um, okay. Um, nothing like describing the image. Okay. So this is an interesting photograph, you know, this kind of interaction between human and creature, you know, in this case, a giraffe. Um, you know, it's really not, I, I want to say it looks a little soft, but it's, I reduced the so size and it, it's still fine, but I still think it's a little soft in the woman's face. But, you know, I, I, I like the image a lot. I love the, you know, the fact that, you know, they're, Giraffe is so close. I like the out of focus background. I don't know if you did something back there or that's just the way it looked. Uh, it, either way, it's fine. You know, I mean, it really kind of adds attention. The fact that it kind of adds to the color scheme too. It kind of balances out the color scheme because she's very blue and purple, and the you know the uh, the giraffe is very kind of warm colored, and then you've got all those crazy other greens and other things going on in the background. Um, yeah, a little nitpick would be the, uh, whatever it is, looks like a little bit of a sign or a metal thing. Uh, that could have been cloned out or maybe even cropped out. Uh, but still, interesting kind of an image. And um, I will give this one a seven. Beauty of bare fall tree in infrared. Uh, infrared. Now, see, I'm going to guess that. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't look infrared. 
So interesting. I guess maybe uh, the fact that when you really look at the background, because there's no, the trees bare, but if you look in the background, there are some, there is some foliage back there and it's, it's white. So therefore, yeah, it does, it, it leaves, but it's kind of neat. I mean, if you never said this was an infrared, I never would have guessed it was. Um, but again, it doesn't matter. I don't really care. Yeah, when I'm, ju when I'm judging, I mean, of course I would care if we were talking and wondering how you did it, but uh, I don't think, you know, infrared is good or bad or whatever. I just, I don't really, the, your process doesn't concern me. The result does. And, you know, in this particular image, I, you know, it's just a, an interesting, very, very busy black and white photograph, but it kind of all works because your branches, you've got very, very strong diagonals uh, going on. So I think, it's a very, you know, in that way, it's a strong image. I kind of, you know, being infrared, you're not going to get a lot of shadow detail. I kind of wish there was in some of the shadowed areas of the smaller branches. But, um, you know, still, I just think there's a lot of strength to the design of this image. I will give it a seven. Fear. Boy, that's... That image would really creep someone out. I have a friend who does this kind of stuff. And um, it's just like every time, you know, she's like the sweetest person in the world, but she comes up with these really creepy images. And, uh, you know, it's like, uh, and this would be like, I, you know, it, this is exactly what she would do. It's amazing. Um, you know, nicely done. It really has a message. Your title really works well with this. Um, yeah, you know, it looks, I, I tell you, I'm looking at this on a 27 inch monitor and some of these photographs, when I look at them at, you know, the full screen, they look really soft, but then what do you do is I reduce them down to 50%, which is a little trick I learned uh, from doing this with my camera club. And then you can really see if the image is sharp or not. And I, it, it looks sharp enough. I, I mean, I may want to recommend it was even a little bit sharper, but it's a still really nicely done. Uh, what you did in the background is really good. It looks to me like you, kind of isolated some of the image because it looks like this, whatever this thing is, is on top of somebody and it looks like there's hair there and then you kind of got rid of the rest of it. So it's kind of just sort of floating in your background. And being, you know, the nature of the image, it all sort of works. You know, I might have like taken more of what this thing was standing on out of it. But, you know, I, I you know, again, I don't really care. Your message is really coming off really strong here. Uh, and it's a neat idea to process this the way you did in kind of the sort of sepia type tone. Uh, we'll give this a seven. Gladiolus rose. Okay, different kind of flower. Okay, um, neat. Uh, a nice floral image. Um, you know, really nicely done, nice and sharp. Um, you know, the, uh, uh, you really kind of composed it well. I mean, one of the fun things about photographing flowers, besides photographing the beauty of their of flowers, is actually creating art from them, you know, with your composition by not showing the whole flower. And in this case, I think, you know, you really composed this really well. The uh, whatever stamen, pistol, whatever, you know, I'm not, I'm not up on the my knowledge of what different floral parts are. Uh, I think you put it really nicely in the image. It you're all the stuff around, all the petals really create a beautiful design. Uh, the coloring is really nice. Uh, my recommendation on this image uh, would be you've got some, you know, you know, obviously flowers are not absolutely perfect all the time, and you've got some spots on the petals. And because you're kind of going sort of abstract with this, I would have probably cloned any of the things that are you know, it wouldn't be considered, I don't want to say defect, but kind of defects. It's just like little things like, um, hang on a second. I don't know if I can, oh yeah, I can annotate. I'm going to annotate. I'm going to try to annotate. Um, just kind of draw some on here. Okay. Yeah, draw some. Let me see what I got. Oh yeah, good. So like little things like this, you know, and these little spots here, this little thing here I would fix. Uh, I, I mean, I'm a perfectionist when it comes to this stuff. And believe me, this is a gorgeous image. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to detract from that. And if you're the kind of person that doesn't want to fix those kind of things, that's, you know, your thing. But the fact that you've really crossed the line into art here, uh, I would, you know, I would highly strongly recommend that you kind of take away the any kind of semblance of reality for this image and really just show it for 
the artistic value that it is and kind of get rid of that stuff. But still, nicely done, a seven. Oh, I don't know what happened. Yeah, for a minute, I thought I lost you guys. <laughs> no, yeah, Mario, Diana is trying to get in. I told her. Yeah, I see. admitted her. You guys are shown on the screen, and I seem to have oh, lost she... the ability to put the score in. Uh-oh. Do you, anybody see a seven up there? No. No. Uh, yeah, now I'm frozen out. Uh -oh. um, how do I do this? Let me try stop share. Are you guys there? Yes. Yeah. I'm completely frozen. Mm. Nothing is happening. Uh, Do you hear me? I, I am on. All I see is the uh, is the picture of the flower, and I can't get out of it. All right, I did an escape. Hold on. Can you, yeah, guys see this, can you see the screen? No, we just no, see no. your face, Mary. Oh, great. How scary for you guys. Um, <laughs> oh, come on, you're a good-looking guy. Yeah. All right, hold on. Let me see here. All right, I see you guys now. Is Diana in here? I'm here. Do you hear okay. me? Yeah, yes. okay. All right, let me see. Now I got to go back to share screen, I guess. And I guess, I don't know if I can frozen. Let's see if I can go back to that flower. Yeah. I, I was yeah. in the process of scoring. You want yeah. me to come up here? All right, hold on. Diana, put yourself on mute, Diana. All right, everybody, please uh, put yourself on mute if you're going to talk and have noise. Yeah, it's very, it is, it's distracting for me, too, as well. I, I don't I don't know what happened. Uh oh, I guess it's these four here. I'm sorry. Hold on. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. Sure. They were left out. They were left out. All okay. right. So Gladiolus <laughs> Rose. You I think you That's gave seven. Seven. Seven, right? Yep. Okay. Beach cornhole. Okay. I'm not sure what that I guess that's the game. Um Interesting image and, you know, the fact that you've got, um, <laughs> there's a little story value here. It's just kind of cool. Um, you know, it's like, are these guys looking at the beanbag or are they looking at the girl? Um, you know, it's kind of, uh, you know, that that kind of story aspect is kind of neat. And I like the fact that they're framing her and she's in a really interesting position. Uh, you know, it's, she's holding like whatever that is in her hand, I guess a water bottle and, you um, and then she's got like you know the position of her throwing the thing. I do kind of wish the beanbag was in a little. You know, obviously beanbag's traveling. Hopefully, if it went a little higher, and you've got another uh, photo with the beanbag a little bit higher, so we can see her entire head. I think it would even be a stronger image. But still, there's a neat story value here, and um, you know, and what you know, what are you gonna do? Pretty girl in a bikini, right? But it's just. To me, the idea is like you really don't know what these guys are looking at. And um, that to me kind of adds a sense of humor and a, and, a, and a sense of story to this photograph. Plus, this, you know, this guy's nice and all the other stuff is you know, there's a lot of distraction around here, but you manage to control it enough in a way that it, it's not pulling my eye from what's going on in the middle of the image here. Uh, give this a seven. Finger Island. Um, neat image. I, I, I don't know if you're in a hotel or whether this is a drone shot. Um, I love drones, uh, you know, done a lot. I like, I love the way this is composed. Um, I like, it's very, very sparse and your diagonal, uh, aspect of this between not just the water line to the sand, but, you know, you've got a whole bunch of water, you know, I got a whole bunch of diagonal lines with the sand with the footprints and then the, you've got the two people you know one under the umbrella and the other one standing there creating a nice shadow you've got the person walking and those footprints really really is like kind of your focal point there you know and then it goes into the water and then i don't know what it is out there that's kind of that kind of grayish dark blue color but that adds another uh diagonal line on this and um 
you know, I think it's it's a really super strong image and really nicely seen and composed. Uh, you know, just really kind of, I, I like it a lot. Here's another one where, um, you know, again, I never ding anybody for their framing, but I really think your framing here is unnecessary. You've got such a strong composition. It really doesn't need to have any kind of help with framing. Um, you know, I would just, I'd crop the frame out and just leave it the way it is, but still, you know, that's the, I mean, that's your choice. And again, it doesn't matter to me. I'm not going to affect the way I score it. Uh, but this is definitely a seven. Hydrangea magic. Um, and, uh, somebody's really uh, getting into these flowers and this whole idea of doing this sort of painterly effect here. You know, here it's really, uh, you know, again, nice. You've got a great sense of color. You've got a great sense of working your background into the image and making it work. Uh, but I will say this one, I find it a little, you know, you've got your, I, I'll just say textured background. Uh, it's kind of overlapping into the flowers just a little bit too much. Um, let me see if I can get that annotate thing going here uh, again. Um, yeah, let me, um, so like just like here, you've got this line going through the flowers. You know, here is just, some more of your background, particularly here. Um, you know, these, you know, and again, here's like a lot of these little spots like this, you know, here as well. Um, you know, I really want to see your subject. I mean, I love what you're doing here. I love your concept. If you did the other ones too as well, which I'm assuming it's the same photographer, you really got an eye for this stuff and it's really great. Um, but here, this one, I think you could have worked it a little bit more and made it even better even better uh, just by not having your background interfere with your foreground. Um, I, this one, I'm, I'm going to give a six to. I'm sorry, what was that, Richard? That, that'll that be a six. And that's everything. All right, we have 18 sevens for you to go through and a okay. seven, eight, uh, seven, eight, or nine. Got it. Okay, this is advanced. Kiss me. <laughs> no, thanks. Again, uh, I will give this a seven. Dahlia Valley. Um, give this an eight. Peaceful moment by a river. Um, I will give this a seven. Barn in black and white. Uh, give this an eight. Lampshade. This is a nine. Leaving home. Uh, give this a seven. The sky is the issue there. Dahlia is Garden. This is a nine. Huddled in the cold. Uh, give this an eight. Paper hanger. Uh, nine. Sunflower and friend. Uh, give this a seven. Polly want a cracker. <laughs> give this a seven. Dahlia splatter. Um, I'll go nine on this. Wide smile with eyes wide shut. Uh, I will go, I'll go seven on this. Beauty of bare fall tree in infrared. Uh, I'll go eight on this. Fear. Um, another eight. Gladiolus Rose. Um, I'm going to go, I'll go eight on this. Beach Cornhole. I'll take the, give this one a seven. Singer Island. 
Um, nine. Okay. All right, we've got uh, five nines. I need you to pick a first, second, third, and the remaining two will get honorable mention. Okay. The, uh, it's going to be tough. That's what you get paid the big bucks for. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we got lampshade, Dahlia Garden, Paper Hanger, Dahlia Splatter, and Singer Island. Okay, so Singer Island will be third place. Singer Island will be third place. Okay. I'll just go through them and you tell me. Yeah. Um, all righty. I'm going, this is tough, but I am going to give the, uh, the, the Dahlia in color. That one will be, um, I'm going to give it, that one first place. Yeah, that one will be first place. Yep. This one? Okay. Yep, that's first place. And the lamp with the shadow will be second place. Okay. All right. And... Let's see. Okay. So this is first place. Okay, open uh, group two, honorable mention. Dan Sudberg for Paper Hanger. Nice job, Dan. Dave Cohen, Dahlia Splatter. Third place goes to Dan Sudberg for Singer Island. Second place goes to Dan again, Lampshade. Nice going, Dan. And first place goes to Dave Cohen for Dahlia Garden. Nice work, guys. Wow, that was yeah. really nice work. Okay. Um, now we go to, that was open, right? Yep. All right, so if we go to the intermediate class one, night photography, there's only six in this one. Okay. We'll just be picking a first place eventually, but let's, let's go to the score. Okay, night photography. Group one, uh, Xmas lighted tree. Okay, interesting, uh, interesting image. Um, you know, it's you really kind of caught the tree really nicely. Um, it looks like it might be. I don't know if that's snow up there or those stars. It's hard to really tell, but um, you know, again, it's uh, still very interesting. Uh, you know, it's a it's a very interesting image. I would have to say though, you know, there's a lot of kind of distractions, distracting stuff here. I'm not exactly sure what's going on. Uh, looks like the driveway is blue. I don't know if that's the reflecting the light of the uh, of that tree or not. But there's a lot of other stuff, you know, like the the speed limit sign and the other thing that's on the left uh, is below the speed limit sign. Some kind of pole, I guess, maybe fence post. And so, and a lot of that stuff's kind of distracting. I think a crop here or maybe even walking closer to the tree and just photographing or even zooming in and just photographing just parts of the tree. I think this image would have been, you know, a, a lot stronger because it's like, I see this really interesting tree and then my eye just gets pulled to, you know, the speed limit sign and uh, whatever's going on in the, you know, the, the garage in the background with the car in the driveway and there's all these other little things. So I'll give this one a six. Beach dining. Um, yeah, really I'm interesting. Sorry, I, I point out this is all night photography. You remember that, right? Yeah. Well, okay. this is this says yeah. This is night, right? I mean, so yeah. I'm yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I didn't mean for this photo in particular. I forgot if I if I announced it in the beginning. 
Oh yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 I did get that. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So this is a, an interesting night photograph. I mean, you know, a lot of times you think at night you think of a different kind of photograph than this, but yeah, here you saw the scene of you know. So it looks like the tables are in the water here on the on the right, and you've got the uh, the waitress. And, and so on. I mean, it's an interesting idea for an image and I like the fact that you made it. However, what I'm not really, I'm not really seeing kind of like, you know, other than the uh, the waitress or at least the woman's in black. I don't know if she's a waitress or not. Just, I, I think she is because she's wearing an apron and she has a pen. But um, I just think, you know, I just think there's really not any area that's drawing me in or out of this image. It's kind of a fun image to look at. But you know, I'm not really seeing a story here, or I'm not seeing really a focal point other than the waitress who's really got not much of an expression, uh, you know, and she's not really doing anything really interesting. And then you got that guy with the elbow on the face. I mean, the, you know, the hand on the face and his elbow. It's just like it to me. It's just kind of like it looks like there needs to be a story going on here, and it's just not. It's just not making it. Uh, I'll give this a six. Glockenspiel. Um, interesting night shot of the uh, the sky. You know, I guess you know, being in the city, you don't really see any stars or anything, or else it's more of a blue hour shot. But still, kind of neat. I like the idea of the blue sky with the kind of warm color of the lighting of the uh, architecture, which is kind of neat. Um, it's really neat. And here, it's like uh, you got kind of an extreme angle going on here. You know, which is a distortion that happens, but I think here it kind of works in your favor. Uh, it, it adds a little bit to the drama of the scene, particularly with this type of architecture being very uh, kind of gothic and very, you know, very you know, with all these pointed little steeples and things pointing up at the sky. Yeah, I think it's kind of neat. Now, uh, I think a couple of things, if you crop this from the right a little bit more, I think the building to the right of this, uh, I guess, it's, uh, you know, I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it's the building... To the right is just a little bit more modern. I don't think it really kind of, it's not adding anything. If anything, it kind of pulls your eye because it's so bright. And I also kind of wish there were more, either more people or less people. I either You could have probably gotten away with cropping all the people out and cropping to the right. Uh, or, you know, if you have an image that has more of the people where the heads are not cut off and so on. I think, you know, that would, that would make a, another very interesting image. You know, both one, focuses on the scene with the people and the one without the people focuses on the building. You know, here you got kind of a hybrid of the two. Um, I'm going to give this one a sixth. Italian village. Um, interesting image. Now, you know, here the scene is really busy. But, you know, and it's just kind of, you know, I mean, it's a realistic scene of an Italian village, right? Um, but, and it has a sort of uh, rough aspect to it. I mean, your white balance is definitely, you know, not set for the light that's being shown here and everything. But, uh, you know, this is one of those images where everything that's wrong with it kind of makes it right. And the reason why is there's two reasons. One is the the two people in the back in in the middle of the image i you know it's like you're kind of wondering what that looks like two women and you don't know if they're embracing or you don't know if um you know you don't, you don't really know like what the story is but it's a curiosity it kind of lends itself to like you know kind of what's going on particularly in the scene and then the green bar whatever that is the word other you know i don't want to try and pronounce it because i'm pretty bad at that stuff you know, that kind of like sort of adds to it. So it kind of makes this almost a, uh, a a street shot, a grab shot, but one with intent. And, um, you know, as oddball as that sounds, this image to me is, I find, I, I, I find it as the judge being extremely striking. Uh, we're going to give this a seven. Ready for takeoff. Um. I guess, I guess I I like the title. I, I don't quite know why I titled it that, but I, I do like it. Um, I I like the idea of this. You know, it's kind of a night scene along the road, and you see the headlights of your car. 
driving along. You got a nice curve with the edge of the road and leading in. You know, and this is kind of obviously you were probably in a moving car, so it's got you know, fast shutter speed. So the there's no streaky lines of the traffic. Uh, which, you know, would have also made a nice image if you were by the side of the road and you used a long exposure. But um, still, it's kind of neat the way you've done this. Um, you know, I just think it's like the the cars are positioned in a nice spot. You've got whatever's going on in the sky. You've got that really nicely uh, done, you know, that kind of twilight sky and that one cloud that looks uh, not quite sure what it looks like, kind of like a mushroom or something, or even almost like some kind of creature with his arms outstretched. I mean, there's all that stuff and it really kind of works colors work really well i mean it kind of all the sky colors and the landscape color kind of all sort of blend in with each other so you know interesting interesting image this could have been there could have been a lot done wrong with this image but it's you did a really good job of putting everything where it needs to be uh, i will give this a seven danube glory um, this is a really nice image. I mean, we had that other image of the building. And this one's a lot more ornate. Uh, but you can kind of see it's all about this. I mean, yeah, there's some cars in the background there. You know, there's cars in the foreground, rather. But they're so small, they don't really matter. If anything, it, it lends a sense of place. You know, even with the street lights and everything, you kind of see that this building is somewhere. It's not just sitting out in the middle of the wilderness anywhere. And you've got that, you know, against the night sky. Uh, you know, it's it's and it's just really again, and you know, kind of the blue tone of the night sky, uh, with the warm tone of the way the building is lit, kind of really kind of gives a beautiful color balance. Um, give this a seven. Okay, we have uh, three for you to give a seven, eight, or nine to. Right. Italian village. Um, give us an eight. Ready for takeoff. Uh, give this one an eight as well. Danube glory. Uh, this one I'll give a nine. Okay, Richard, your work is done on this one. Yeah, I know. I didn't right, do that so, just to make my job easier, but <laughs> all right. So I, I call it the just, way I see it. <laughs> I can just assign this one first place, and that's it. This one was easy for you, and okay. Night photography, group one intermediate, first place. Jerry Morelli, Dan, you've glory. Nice going, Jerry. I know you're not on the call. Okay. And then that takes us to group two, advanced night photography. We have 27 photos in this one, Richard. Okay. Okay, here's our first pass. Uh, all right. Holding on to full moon. Um, really, I, I tell you, I, I photograph the moon a lot. So anytime I see a moon photograph that is different, you got to really, uh, you know, you got to really admire it. I mean, when it's done right, this one, I, I, I like it a lot. I like the, um, you know, I like the, uh, I like your composition with these grasses. I don't know how they're lit, whether it's just like, and, you know, like that's around or whether you actually, you know, physically lift this. I mean, again, I don't really care, but it's a really neat concept. And then you got the moon in the background. I mean, it's kind of muted, muted. And, you know, normally, I mean, if I look at this as a, re, you know, if I'm judging based on what it really looked like, you know, I somehow think the moon would have been a lot brighter. But I can see why you muted it down because it would have just otherwise blended into the background. I kind of wish if you, I mean, I don't know if you put the moon there, if the moon was actually there, then that's fine. It, you know, and it's going to arc over and, you know, not it would have gone out of your sight, but it would have, I mean, compositionally and, I, you know, again, it's just a thought if you don't mind moving things around, I would think 
the moon would look really cool if it was, um, let me just do my little annotate thing here. Um, if the moon was right here, this would be like a perfect composition, but you know, if you're going for reality, then that's a moot point in this particular case. And I don't really, you know, I'm not gonna, I think compositionally it would work better. And why did that thing not disappear? Hang on a second. Uh, Oh, uh, there we go. Hit the wrong thing. Okay. Um, yeah, so that, I mean, again, just with that interesting, but still, it, as it is, it's an interesting composition. I'm going to use seven. Haunted church. Boy, that's a weird scene. Um, and I, I don't mean that in a bad way. Um, it's just a very interesting concept you've got here. You've got, you know, you got this night sky with all the stars. You've got this overlit. It almost looks like I don't know if the mist was there. Or you created the mist. You know, you got that kind of misty graveyard thing, and then the church almost looks like the way you've got it processed. It almost looks like the church is a ghost. You know, I mean, it almost doesn't look like it's really there, and it all that adds to the creepiness of this particular scene. Um, it's just the, the only real critique I could give or a little suggestion I could give to this. I don't really want to say, you know, it's an interesting concept would be, you know, so the two headstones that you don't see all of. I kind of it's a really minor thing. And but I kind of wish there was more of that. But I don't know if that's my own personal taste or whether it would actually make the image look better. So, you know, that being said, take that for what you want. I won't penalize this image for that at all because what all that stuff, it's not distracting. I mean, it's not leading my eye out of the image or doing any of the things that that kind of stuff would normally do. So it's not a problem. It's, I guess, just a suggestion. Um, I'll definitely give this one a seven. Night flight. That's a really interesting image. I mean, everything is, it's, um, yeah, I mean, I, I would imagine this is a created image and you didn't like manage to get all this. It just, cause it just seems to me like your foreground is sort of somewhat textured, even though it looks like out of focus uh, foreground grasses. And then you've got these like really sharp geese and then you've got the moon or sun or something in the background. Um, yeah, this could kind of, uh, be borderline as to not a night Scott night image, but I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt that you did this at night. Um, it definitely gives the impression of night. So to me, it, you know, in my call as a judge, I would definitely, you know, make this, I would, I would definitely say this meets the criteria of the uh, subject of the uh, theme. Uh, I will give this a seven. Night lights. Indeed. I like a um, very interesting image. You know, the fact that the fact, I mean, sometimes you see these things and it's like, how does someone actually see a photograph here um, and yet make it work? I mean, I, I would imagine you didn't plan this and it just happened to be like, oh, wow, look at this. And you, you know, got your camera out, made this image. I think it's really kind of cool, the whole idea of it. Um, I like it. Uh, you know, one suggestion would be the, I, you've got the palm trees, which is really nice. The palm, you know, the palm tree leaves, you got the trunk of the palm tree, which I think, uh, you know, I don't know. I, my original thought was it probably doesn't belong there, but now the more I look at it, the more I'm actually starting to like it. So I'm going to retract that statement and not ding it. The only thing would be the moon is, you know, I mean, I know there's such thing as a blue moon, but this one is a, little too blue for me or i mean for reality i mean it's a very realistic image you know it's not an abstract like the previous one or a digitally create you know kind of conceived image so i would think i would prefer this moon being uh you know the color it actually was which was like a bright sort of blue white as opposed to this kind of turquoisey blue um that being said it's still a strong composition so i will give it a seven to keep it in the uh in the running Night from the porch. Um, 
there's a lot. I mean, I, I wouldn't say this is night per se. I would say it's twilight, you know, and um, if you go with the actual meteorological definition, which I'm not going to, then it would be, you would think it was a, uh, you know, I, I would say it's a, uh, you know, not really night, but twilight. But, you know, to me, twilight is night. So um, I'll keep it in. I, what I like about this image is, is I really like that kind of moody sky. And I like the way it's reflecting in your water. Um, however, you know, the, your horizon line of the, uh, is really crooked. And, you know, that is kind of, it kind of ends the slant of the image. And, you know, if you're going abstract, that would be one thing, but this isn't an abstract image by any stretch of the imagination. So I would really want to see that horizon line looking the way it should when you look at it with your eye. And then I would, you know, your foreground with the piece of the palm tree and the edge of the river, I don't think that's really doing that much for you. I mean, this would be, if you could straighten this and crop out that stuff and kind of make it more about the sky, uh, your kind of background stuff going on there with the cars in the, in the I guess, apartment building and then the river, you know, so the, it's like all this kind of regular stuff is framed by your sky and the reflection of the sky and the river. I think this would be a much better image. Uh, I will give this one a six. Sundown at the Falls. Okay, so this one, I'm going to have to disqualify because I don't see this as being a night photograph. Um, if it's an overexposed night photograph, then it would be a very long exposure and that water river, I mean, the waterfall would look much silkier than it does. So I, I you know, I just don't see the night here. So I'm going to have to DQ this one. Ferris wheel at night. Now this is really strong. I mean, I've seen I've seen a lot of great, uh, you know, uh, stuff done with Ferris wheels at night, and um, I've never really photographed one at night. But um, yeah, maybe at some point I'll get the opportunity. Um, but I, you know, this is really kind of cool. Um, the I mean, it's really strong and striking. You know, the way you've got your diagonals. Uh, what I really like is the lower left-hand corner, you've got that one girder or, you know, whatever you would call that thing. Uh, it's like right there in the middle of your corner, which really um, creates a very strong entry point into your image. And then it goes all the way up, you know, and it creates that. Now you've got a couple of lights out um, and you chose to leave them out and that's your choice. I don't think it has a negative effect on the image. Uh, but if you're into, um, you know, playing around with post-processing, it's not that difficult a thing for you to clone uh, light into the, um, you know, into the empty spaces. Um, it's it's just, a, you know, it's, it's just a way of making a really good image just a little bit better in my eye. Again, that's, that's a suggestion, not a fault. Um, you know, just something to play with because this image is, it's really strong the way it is. Uh, I will give this a, uh, I'll give this a, a seven. No squall. Um, so you choose, chose on this, it's interesting because, you know, you've got, looks like some intentional camera movement going on with the, um, you know, with the, uh, with the houses and the kind of rippling lines of the trees, but you've also got these um, um, lens flares, which I guess, I guess they don't move when you do this. I've never really experimented with this. So in all reality, I mean, in, I, again, I kudos for you for being brave enough to enter this image. Um, most judges would say, you know, what is wrong with you? Why, how, why are you entering this image? I mean, it's, it's got so many mistakes in it. Why are you even bothering? But I think here, your mistakes are working in your favor. I'm assuming that, you know, there's a, it's snowing or it's, it almost looks like a wet snow and you got water drops on your lens or your filter. And as a result, they're showing up as these lens flares. And then you looked at it and you maybe almost deleted the shot. And then you go, wait a minute, I see something here. And I'm glad you did because I see it too. And I think it's a really, really interesting image. Uh, I kind of wish, I, I think you could have gotten away with cropping out the lower, uh, maybe quarter of the image. Uh, and Cause it kind of sort of just becomes sort of random 
uh, reflections of uh, solar flares and stuff, but um, or lens flares rather. But um, you know, but other than that, I mean, I I, I think it's it's a really interesting photograph. Um, I will I'll definitely give this one a seven. Night at the park. Um, definitely got a real moody effect going on here. Um, you know, I kind of like that in that it's, you know, it's just really sort of, you know, it looks like this really kind of gray, almost misty night, hazy night. And then, you know, there's like, you know, people going on here, you don't know, like, are they supposed to be here? Do they sneak into this place? You know, what's kind of going on? And it's a really kind of an interesting story effect to this. However, when I look at this, it, it definitely looks like uh, the image is crooked. The horizon is crooked on this. Um, I, you know, particularly when you look at whatever that walkway is that's behind whatever that structure is, that, um, uh, you know, really strange structure. Um, you know, it looks like everything's crooked, and I'd like to see all that straightened out. I also would really like to see the top of that structure. I have no idea what it is, but it looks like above what's there, and maybe it's just some industrial artifact or something like that but what's above there looks really really interesting those are you know i see you see kind of two arches up there and i really would have liked to have seen more of that um you know it would really kind of added added to the mood and the composition uh i'll give this a six end of day Interesting image, you know, at night. Um, yeah, it's funny because you take these images that are done, you know, most likely in Europe or something like that. So I'm looking at the kind of, it has a, or maybe even like an Asian look like to it, like it's in some Asian country or whatever it is. It's, you know, it's hard to say, but, you know, the international um, traffic symbols kind of give away that it's not in America. And, um, yeah, I, I like that. I like the... Um, I like the juxtaposition between that foreground lantern and the person walking. I think that really kind of ties the whole image together. I, you, know, you could have probably had a little bit more on the left. It doesn't bother me that you've cut off part of the flowers. That doesn't bother me as much because they're not really pertinent to the scene other than the fact that they kind of add a little bit of something to it. But the fact that the lantern is right on the edge there is a little disconcerting. But, you know, again, minor nitpick. There's a really interesting composition here, and I really kind of like what, you know, that you saw this and that you photographed this the way you did. Uh, this is, uh, give this a uh, seven. Illuminated at night. Um, it's interesting. I don't know if those are lightning bugs or whether, you know, I don't know what's going on in this image, but again, I, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Um, interesting photograph for sure. Um, again, I don't really know, you know, it's like this, one of those things like you look at it and if it's like it was hanging on the wall in a gallery or something like that, you'd really stare at it and try and figure it out. So, and I, you know, but I mean, but you know, that aside, it's a really interesting image. You composed it really well. I like the fact that, uh, the lamp with the, um, dragonfly on it, the fact that there's a dragonfly there and then the possibility that your little lights are, oh, actually, I see what they are. They're kind of like little LED, like Christmas lights or something. Oh, I was hoping they were fireflies, but it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, it's, just, it's a really interesting composition. It's, you know, it's, it's like sort of a realistic abstract. And I think it's really well seen and, you know, really well handled. Uh, I may have that bar that's on the coming out of the diagonal of the lamp. I would have maybe cloned that out, but then maybe put it back in because maybe it wouldn't have, uh, yeah, it wouldn't work as good. But it's a suggestion if you want to play around with the image to kind of see what it looks like without that. But still, it's a you know an amazingly interesting night photograph. Uh, I will give this one a seven. Hail the sun. <laughs> um, really interesting image uh hang on, i just want i sorry it's just reducing the size a little bit to kind of see so it looks a little um kind of grainyish and artifacty i mean it's a really interesting idea okay you got the person at the end um yeah and then you've got the leading line of whatever they're standing on there that kind of a dock and then you've got the lights and everything 
And then, of course, the sun is just there, whether it's coming up or going down. It really has that kind of really interesting thing going on. But what I'm seeing, it, I'm not exactly sure what I'm seeing in the water. Okay, it looks like there's some kind of artifacty thing going on, like uh, something's wrong with the JPEG. Uh, either you cropped it too much or whatever, but there's like, you know, this uh, artifacting going. If you look, you can kind of, particularly where it's very obvious is, um, let me pull my little annotation tool up here, is like, you see these like little vertical lines, okay? And then in the water, you see this kind of like noisy stuff here and then here too. It's kind of adds, you know, I mean, if you're going for something kind of real abstracty, it'd be different, but it's everything else looks kind of real. And, you know, and even your sky looks like you sort of um, denoise the sky, but in the process kind of lost some of the other effect there. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I, th I think it's an interesting idea for a photograph and really kind of uh, the concept is great, but I think technically there's some issues here. So I'm going to have to give this a six. Nights in Boca. Um, I have a friend who's in Boca right now. Um, so it's a, uh, you know, definitely a nice guy image. I mean, a night photograph and you've got all the lights and everything going on. However, to me, it's a little too dark. Um, I see two lights and I see a bunch of other little lights, but I'm not really seeing, um, you know, anything of that's drawing my attention to kind of, you know, either create a story or create a visual effect that's going to, you know, keep my eye on this image. It's, I almost wish there was a little bit more detail in the background or what's going on, particularly those like areas that are completely silhouetted in the background to kind of give me a, a sense of place here as far as what this is a photograph of and um you know what are the you know what the what the bright light areas even the little ones and the big ones you know what's their context where are they and you know why you know it kind of adds a, you know answers the question as to why they're there uh i'll give this a six Sunset behind the trees. Okay, so again, I mean, the, I mean, there's, I, I, I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you slide on twilight, but when you doing a sunset, sunset isn't night. You know, there's a line here. There's kind of like, I mean, if you look at like um, the um, what do you call it? The uh, uh, you know, the 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 atmospheric definitions of things. You know, you've got like you know. Civil twilight, nautical twilight, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then you've got what they call, you know, golden hour sunset. And this is more like golden hour. Now it might be post sunset and this is a, uh, you know, and this is kind of an afterglow, but it's not really a night sky thing. And, um, you know, or not, it's not the night sky. It's like, uh, it's like sort of a sunset sky. So I've got to disqualify that, but I will tell you, um, with that, if you look, there's like haloing going on in your silhouetted trees. That's something that you would want to fix as well. So, yeah, I'm going to have to disqualify this one. View of Manhattan from a Brooklyn park. There's a really strong night image uh, of the city, you know, and it's like, uh, yeah, it's it looks very sharp. And uh, once I, you know, when I, this is one of the ones that looks really kind of fuzzy when I'm looking at it full screen, but when I'm looking at it, uh, you know, at, at, at its appropriate size, it actually is really, uh, it's definitely very sharp. And it's really, it's it's a very busy image and it's um, got, but it, and it kind of works. I mean, a couple of things, um, you know, the, um, what's going on in your foreground. I mean, obviously there's some construction going on there. So, I kind of wish some of that stuff wasn't there, particularly you've got the uh, pieces of equipment that are on the right. Uh, they're kind of a red color in the lower right-hand corner. And also that pile, the pile of dirt, and actually there's two piles of dirt. Uh, they're kind of not really adding to your scene at all. It almost would have been nice if you could have gotten down on that uh, walkway if it wasn't closed off and, uh, and then photographed the city from there. Or even just kind of, you know, I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to crop that out. 
and make it work. But still, it's a, you know, it's a, it's an interesting composition, and it's kind of like what was going on at the time there. So, um, you know, it's got kind of a sort of a journalistic effect as well as being, yeah, you know, really, really nice capture of the uh, of the city skyline. Um, I, I'll give this a seven. Four in a row. So it looks like we've got some intentional camera motion going on here. Um, or what they, people like to call ICM. Um, really interesting. Now, so, you know, you get the, um, what do you call it? The, you know, I like the, you know, the judges who've got to stick to the rules as written. You know, and the rules of composition are that, oh, you got to have odd number of things in your photograph, and even numbers not. But, you know, when you look at the placement of this stuff, it doesn't look wrong. It looks right. You know, the fact that you've got two long uh, lit lines and then two short lit lines, you know, the, I guess it's these uh, lights are on the pine tree, I mean, of the palm trees. So it it all works, you know, it all works. And uh, I, yeah, so I can't, I can't fault you for going that route. You know, maybe a little bit more of that one palm tree on the left where you, where it's running out of the scene. Uh, because you put that white border around there, it kind of makes it so that you don't, you know, the eye doesn't escape, but still I kind of wish it would have made more of a complete image if you either clumbed out where it went off the screen or, you know, or, or had the entire tree, but still, yeah, nice. Again, that's a, that's a nitpick. Um, I give this a seven. Christmas town, 2021. Um, really nice picture of Christmas lights. I mean, if you're going, you know, in a, as a night photograph, it's always good to kind of go for the gusto of the Christmas lights because they really add a lot of color. They add a lot of stuff to the scene. Yeah. You know, imagine what this would look like. I mean, this is a ski lift, I'm assuming. And uh, yeah, it, you imagine what it would look like if the lights weren't on. You know, it would just be a very, very different image, much starker. Um, uh, but, you know, still, it's kind of interesting the way it's done. Uh, you know, it's almost like you're, you're not drawing to the attention the fact that this is a ski lift. And uh, at least I'm assuming that's what it is. And, uh, you know, you're just really dealing with the colors and the interior, the way the interior of the building is lit, which has really interesting colors, the arches and the... Uh, the kind of the glass, uh, you know, the, the eaves of the, or the roof of the building. And the, you know, they're really just kind of, it adds something there. There's a, you know, the coloring is kind of interesting in that kind of greenish tone, uh, the way it works with all the rest of the lights and so on. Yeah. Interesting photograph for sure. Uh, I'll definitely give this a seven. Dusk. So I will give this one a, um, you know, a, uh, you know, the fact that it's, I'll just say it's an overexposed dust because the lights are on, you know, it looks like daylight up there. Right. But it's obviously night because, you, you know, they're not going to light all this stuff up at night. And I mean, during the day, um, that being said, um, I'm looking and I see sort of looks like almost a uh, double exposure effect or something like that um, where like you're, it looks like the camera might have moved or something like that, um, you know, while you were shooting. Because, you know, if you look at the lights, they, 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 they look like they're moving a little bit. And I don't think that was the intent of this. I think you would want it to be a little bit more sharp. Also, you can see it's also crooked. You know, the horizon line is crooked. Um, you know, I, I, that would you'd really want to see that straightened out. And then you've got the, uh, the fishing boats in the foreground. You know, they, you know, it's nice that you've included them, but I wish there were more of them because, you know, they're interesting looking boats and it almost would make, now it's kind of like a, a distraction in the foreground, but if you showed more of the boats, it would be a really interesting foreground because then it kind of really helps tell the story that, you know, you've got a lot of pleasure boats in the background, but you've got working boats in the foreground. Um, you know, kind of like when you go down to the Jersey Shore, you see where the scallop fleets are, and the fishing fleets are, you know, they're right next to these marinas that have like people's pleasure boats. So, but with this, yeah, I mean, it's just like too many technical, it's an interesting scene, but it's just too many technical flaws with the, with the movement and the, uh, and the crooked horizon to, 
you know, not, you know, not make this anything other than a six. Paul Grass. Uh, really interesting. Yeah, I mean, obviously lit by something, you know, light on the house or street light or something like that, or maybe at a flashlight. Uh, really uh, is an interesting idea for a photograph. Um, I like the curvy grass on the right. I think that really, you know, adds to your composition. Uh, I think, though, if you took this thing and cropped it as a square right down, uh, let, me do, let me annotate this, great. Um, if you crop this thing kind of right here and just got rid of all this, um, I think this would be a really strong image. All this stuff, uh, you know, behind my little X there, and I don't mean that to be insulting, and please don't take it that way. Um, it just, it doesn't add to your composition as much. You know, I think everything to the right is really clean and very prettily done. I think you really saw something amazing there, but I, you know, all the other stuff there is just, and on the left, it's just a little too random. You know, you got like the tops of the grass are cut off a little bit more than, you know, just where you have it just in one place on the right. So I would crop that and I would really think it would, you have like a really, really very strong photograph. Uh, but it, as presented here, I'm going to have to give it a six. Two swans. Um, that this is interesting. Hang on here. Let me just go. My view options go to fifty percent. Okay, yeah. Um, so this has uh the look of, um, you know, back in the old days before color photography, what they used to do is you know they take a black and white image and then people would, you know, you have an artist hand color it in and they would make a postcard out of it or something like that. Um, this is really interesting, and um, you know, I'm kind of I kind of get the feeling that those swans weren't there, but if they weren't there, you did a really good job of doing the reflection and all that too. So, but still it's an interesting image and it's like all this like randomness and it's what looks like almost like it's hand colored black and white image, you know, and then it's framing all this disorder. And in the middle, there's all this order. And then you've got these reflections in the water. And I don't know if that's supposed to be stars and um, you know, it's, um, I, I'm not exactly sure what they're supposed to be because when you look at the, you know, the sky looks like it's cloudy, but maybe it's not cloudy there. So, I mean, I don't really know. And I mean, again, it's almost like a fantasy creation. And so, you know, little things like that don't bother you as much as if this was like a realistic presentation of this scene. Um, so, you know, those kind of things are like, almost like, you know, I, I don't know, but I, long story short, I really like this photograph. I'm gonna give it a seven. Nighttime snowfall. Okay, um, hang on a second here. Yeah, so I love the composition here. It's really simple. You get this suburban scene, right? It's like, who photographs suburbia and makes it look pretty, right? I mean, it's almost like there's like no reason for it. Um, but yet you've got this and it's got this really... Um, you know, you've created this composition here with the foreground tree, the stop sign, and the and then the light, you know, the street light in the foreground, and then you've got the other light in the background there, which is really properly placed. And um, then you can actually see the effects of the snow and so on. Um, what I am seeing, though, and I'm going to actually not ding it because it almost looks right, um, is there looks like there's noise in the image, but as the guy who goes back to the film days, you know, and I remember using, there's a film called Triax, which was a high speed black and white film. And it would tend to add a lot of grain into your photograph. And that's what it looks like is going on here. It actually works in your favor. I think the only thing that is, a, you know, a technical flaw and I'm not going to ding you too much on it, but I would highly recommend that you fix it is that little red spot um, right here. Um, I think that's like some kind of a sensor spot or what they call a dead pixel or something like that. And, uh, you know, that is something that probably shouldn't be there. No, I, but think, all in that, all, I'm, I I'm, think that's yours. Oh, you know what? It just disappeared. You're right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Well, it's going and coming. So, 
but you're right. Maybe it is. But um, anyway, so right now I don't see it. So forget what I just said. And I'll just give us a seven. Winter light show in Williamsburg. Um, interesting effect here that you're trying to do with this uh, camera motion and, you know, adding a, uh, you know, kind of a sense of abstraction to whatever it is that's going on that's lit here. Um, it's kind of, it's an interesting effect. However, I will tell you that in like the, on the right hand side, the little, you know, smaller curvy areas on the upper right, I guess, um, they're a little bit too, uh, particularly towards the bottom there. It's it, they're just a little too much. You know, they're kind of they're all like mixing together and creating this hot spot. And it's you know my eye is going there, and I don't think that's your intent. You know, with an image like this, the intent is probably would be for my eye to wander around the photograph, and uh, you know it kind of just goes there and stops. So with you know anything like this, when you go abstract again. It's all about composition and it's all about visual flow. And here, I think you've got a great concept, but the visual flow kind of draws me to an area of the image where I don't think you want me to actually spend a lot of time. Um, so I'm going to give this one a six. Blurred night. Um, okay, interesting. Uh, Monroe something, tennis something. Interesting idea that you've got going on here. Um, but I really like her the colors. You know, you've got red. You got, well, I don't know what that orange stuff is on the bottom. Uh, and then you got the curviness of it, which really kind of adds to the composition. And then you've got that kind of dark bush. So all that, you know, I don't want to just describe the image. All that kind of sort of creates this weird composition. And, um, you know, it just, I don't know, it kind of, it's, it just works. Um, I don't know why it does. I mean, a little couple of things. I mean, I like the doors on the, on the left, even though the one door is not, you know, it's kind of running off the edge of the image. I, you know, I'm not looking at this as a picture of a door or a window or anything. I just, you know, it's, it, you know, it works. It works. It's not a distraction. It doesn't leave me out of the image. The only one thing I would say most likely would, I would probably, um, uh, you have like it says Monroe, and then it says I guess that's the number some thirty three looks like, and then tennis, and then there's like another letter or word past that. I I would probably have cropped that out and maybe cropped the streakiness or cloned the streakiness out. I think it would have made this image a bit more stronger, um, but still really interestingly seen. And I'm you know I'm impressed. You know some of these images you folks are entering, you're really taking a risk. And I appreciate you doing that because that's what photography really, that's, you know, that's how you grow as a, as a photographer is to take those risks. And I think you were very successful here. So I'll give it a, give this a seven. Baseball under the lights. Yeah, really. I mean, it's a great scene here that you photographed. You got a great moment, you know, the guys like getting ready to, you know, I, I'm assuming he he's dropping the bat. He swung. He's dropping the bat, and getting ready to run. And, you know, got the catcher. You got the, um, you know, you got the really really perfect positioning of the umpire uh, there. You know, it's like he's getting ready to make some kind of a call. Uh, it's just really an interesting moment. Uh, the 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 issue here really is the fence. You know, it just doesn't. Um, it's not work. It kind of really distracts from the moment that you photographed here. If you ha were able to, you know, I don't know what your lens you were using, but if you were able to get the lens, you know, through the, um, you know, the chain link of the fence, and that would mean, you know, small lens, um, then I think this would be a much better image. But th the way it is, it's just as really, um, you know, it really is just really distracting and it makes me want to see more of the image. Like it makes me want to walk close and just like look through, you know, put my eye right up through one of those chain links and see what's going on. Um, you know, and all this, your foreground and background too, I think could have been cropped out more. I think your foreground really underneath the players really isn't doing anything for the image either. Uh, I'll give this a six. Reflection on the fourth. 
I was waiting for a firework shot. So <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, so nice, really nicely done firework shot. Um, I, I like this. I, I love it when, you know, you have the smoke and the lights reflecting through the smoke from previous, uh, you know, firework explosions or whatever you want to call them. But I like how you did this. I like you got the, you've isolated this, you know, this kind of grouping of three things going off and then you've got the reflection. You know, nothing's getting cut off here. I think compositionally, um, if you cropped more of the write-off, uh, you know, it, I think it would have really made, uh, you know, a bit more of a, a, a nicer composition. This isn't a bad composition though, but I would just think it's just, I, I don't know. It, to me, it just seems like there's a little bit too much negative space to the right of your uh, firework. Uh, but you know, all in all, you know, nicely done. And I know this, you know, this stuff's not easy to do. So, uh. You, and you caught this really nicely. Um, I will give definitely give this one a seven. Not Puff the Magic Dragon. Okay, I was going to ask my first question. Um, I, don't, I guess I don't know if this is the Chinese Lantern Festival in Philly or not, um, but that's always a cool thing to photograph. Um, yeah, a lot of good stuff there, and I like this. I, I like the dragon. I like that you've got you know kind of isolating it. Uh, the only thing I don't, I, 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 it's a little kind of distracting in this image is the background. You've got something going on there. It looks like there's a, you know, something like there's a person selling something or something back there. You can kind of see it. And let me just, I still got my annotation up here. This right there is, um, it kind of affects the dragon because there's a background. Same thing here. It would be neat if you kind of, maybe if you went around to the other side and photographed it or did it without that background there, I think it would be, you know, this would be a much stronger image. Um, but still, you know, it's nice that you saw this dragon and, um, you know, caught it, uh, you know, at least caught it with, you know, the way it's lit because it's obviously going back and forth between two sets of lights because the tail's wagging and you didn't, you know, you caught it in, in, at that right time. But, you know, that one thing in distracting in the background, I've got to give this one a uh, sex. Night music. Um, yeah, it's interesting, um, very interesting idea of this. You know, you guys are got some really interesting concepts going on. I like this, you know, the, you've got the cityscape in the background, obviously the lights are on. Dark is, you know, it's dark. Uh, probably a cloudy night looks like. And, um, you know, it's an interesting scene. And then you've got the orchestra going there. And then not only that, but there's a garden. It's obviously in a garden. And it's, um, you know, then you look around more and then you now see the chess pieces and so on. And, um, you know, and this is, uh, I, it's a nice image. My, and I, I like it. I like it a lot. I'm going to give it a seven, but I just, you know, just one thing is like here, a higher camera angle might've been a little bit better because you'd see more of the audience and more of that chess set. I mean, this almost would be, and I, and I don't know if it's allowed to do that, but you know, this would have been a, a good low altitude drone shot where if the drone was only maybe up 20 feet in the air looking down, I think it would have really, uh, you know, really added to what's going on in the foreground there. But all in all, I mean, this is still a very, very nice photograph. So as I said, it's a seven. Okay, we've got 16 sevens for you to uh, go through, Richard, okay? Got it, okay. Okay, night photography. Holding on um, to full moon. This is seven, eight, yeah. or nine now. Yep, yep, yep. Um, I, I'm sorry. Holding on to full moon. Right. Uh, I'll go with a nine on this. Haunted church. Yeah, I'll also go nine on this. Night flight. Uh, give this one an eight. Night lights. I'm, I'll give this one an eight. And it really, the only reason it's getting an eight is because I wish that moon was more of the appropriate color. Ferris wheel at night. Uh, definitely a nine on this. 
Snow Squall. Um, I'm going to go seven on this. End of day. Um, I'll go seven here too. Illuminated at night. I'll go nine. I know I'm making work for myself. View of Manhattan from a Brooklyn park. I'll go eight on this. Four in a row. Um, seven. Christmas Town 2021. Um, I'll go seven on this. Two swans. Um, I'll go eight on this. Nighttime snowfall. I'm glad you pointed out that red spot wasn't, um, was, was my problem, not yours. Um, <laughs> You know, again, I, I really want to give this a lower score, but as I look at this, the impact of it is just so strong. I'm going to give this a nine. Blurred night. Uh, I'll go eight on this. Reflection on the fourth. I'll go eight on this one as well. Bless you. Thank you. I'm sorry. Night music. Um, I'll go seven on this. Okay, you've got five nines. So you need to pick a first, second, and a third, Richard. Okay. I'll go oh. through them and I'll display them on the bottom too. Okay. Okay. Holding on to full moon, haunted church, Ferris wheel at night, illuminated at night, nighttime snowfall. Okay. Nighttime snowfall will be third place. This one? Yep. Illuminated at night. Ferris wheel at night. Ferris wheel, Ferris wheel at night will be second place. Oh, wrong one. Yeah. This one, yeah, right? Yeah, that one. Yep, that'll be second place. And then the other one with the lamp, I guess that's what it's called, illuminated at night. That'll be first place. This one? Yep. Okay. Just an interesting photograph. Okay. And the remaining two will be given honorable mention. Okay, night photography group two, honorable mention. <clears throat> Holding on to full moon, Sandy Flickstein. Nice going, Sandy. Haunted Church, Harvey Birnbaum. Nice, Harvey. Third place, nighttime snowfall, Mario Edini. Good job, Mario. <laughs> Second place, Ferris Wheel at Night, Mario Edini. Hey. Yay. <laughs> hey. 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 I need that. <laughs> and first place, Sandy Flickstein. Nice job, Sandy. Hey. hey. 
Yay! All right, let me, uh, how do I get it? Uh, hold on. Um, take share screen off, right? Yep. And you are all you magically back. Okay, Richard, thank you very much. Very thank nice you. job. Does yeah. uh, right, anybody nah. have any uh, questions for uh, Richard, for comments? I don't have a question. I just really appreciated uh, Richard's take on all of the photos. It was understandable. It was clear and lightning. I really love the way he judges. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, I like all your comments as well. Um, and uh, just on my light, my illuminated light, uh, I did have that originally the the spout on that light didn't show up. And then I, I did finally was able to get it through, you know, editing techniques. And I was debating whether to have it in or had it out. And I edited it. So it was interesting that you commented that I wondered if it would be better without it. So Yeah, it was it was obviously it was strong the way it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got it. I mean it really it really impressed me when I went through the final round there that it really no, kind of struck no. me as being very creative. Um thank, thank you. Yeah. It's one of those um solar lights. So Anybody have any questions on uh, technique or anything? I, I second Diana, though. Great listening to you, Richard. Yeah. And thank you very much for your very informative remarks. My yeah. pleasure, really. And I mean, these did, are. You did it kindly. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, that's just the way I believe. I don't. I don't believe in harsh judging. I mean, it's no. like it doesn't. It doesn't serve any purpose at all. You got to be constructive about it. And I have to say, I admire you guys for being as creative. I mean, I've done night as a, uh, you know, as a theme before. And I have to say, this is some of the most creative set of photographs I've seen meeting the theme. So kudos to you guys for being so creative. Right. Richard, you, sorry. Not good. Richard, you, you mentioned your club. I'm just curious, what club is it? Uh, I'm in the South Jersey Camera Club. Okay. Where do you, where do those guys, where do those, where does that one meet out of? We meet out of, uh, um, it's in Medford. There's a uh, senior Quaker community called Medford Lees. And uh, they, part of their mission is to serve the community. So they allow groups and clubs to meet there at no charge. And they have a, an amazing auditorium. So we really uh, kind of luck out with a great projector and, you know, nice acoustics and all that stuff. So. Anybody else? No. Richard, very nice job. Great comment. Great. Thank, we'll thank you. you. Thank you very much. Okay, my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Have a great night. Have a wonderful holiday. Yeah, we'll okay, thank you. A couple of times in the, uh, in the coming season. Enjoy the holidays, everybody. Take care. Okay. Thanks thank again. you, guys. Take care. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Okay, I have to stop the recording.